Hello Rap Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Access Show. Today is April Friday the 10th. I'm going to be taking you through everything you need to know about Survival Games news this week. Starting off with breaking news, then we'll be followed up with updates, what's going on today or very close by. Recap of everything that's gone on this week and what's coming up for the future of Survival. Honestly, how tired do people get of me having to explain that when you watch my videos regularly? Let me know in the comment section and let me tell you what we're going to be covering today. Conan Exiles DLC news, Rust beta release news if you missed it last night, New World delays, we're going to be going into Vigor, a brand new game mode, Ark and its botched updates once more, recap of stuff that's going on with Population Zero, Dead Side's release date, Conan Exiles Xbox update, Fallout 76 dropped a brand new trailer for their new content coming out next week and grounded dropped a trailer this week showing the single player campaign as well as a bunch of gameplay streams live and i'm going to be taking a look at a new game called man eater where you get to play a killer shark so help the channel out help the video make sure you like it and let's go so starting off with breaking news, obviously Rust beta is going to be absolutely huge. I dropped the info last night that it's now alive on the Xbox Microsoft Store. It's still there right now, just simply type in Rust Xbox, you come to the article and it gives you the link. It is happening guys and it looks like it's going to be happening much sooner than I first thought. As soon as I get a release date, I will obviously let you guys know. And as soon as I get access, hopefully I get access, I will be giving you gameplay once we're allowed. Rust Beta on Xbox is coming, hopefully PlayStation 2. Finally, our chance to play this crazy PvP game. Just before bed last night, I was checking out Instagram. Go and give me a follow if you want. You'll find the link in the comment section. And I came across an advertisement from Conan Exiles. Now, it doesn't actually pop up when you actually look on their Instagram page, but you can see it's an advertisement for the base game, and it pretty much shows everything that's been going on with their updates over the last few years. But more interestingly is the header. It's called Conan Exiles Shattered Shores. Now, to be clear, it's actually called the Shattered Shore. Let's get that completely right. Now, is it the brand new map? If you don't know, Conan Exiles, of course, is getting a paid expansion later on this year. Originally, it was meant to come out in the first half of the year, but it looked like the devs have pushed it back a little bit into the second half. Now, June is the sixth month, so obviously the second half starts in July, and that may be when we see this new DLC drop. Now, there is another alternative. Possibly, it is not a paid expansion, and it's just another mini DLC. I even went ahead and tagged all the community managers and the creator of Conan Exiles, Joel Bylos, and Natasha, one of the community managers there, liked my tweet. So I'm pretty confident though, this is going to be a full expansion, it's not going to just be a mini DLC, and this is the name of the new one. Which means we could have a pirate themed content coming. It's been something a lot of people have asked for, there's a lot of comments saying they want to see boats and ships added to Conan Exiles. So far the only content we've had underwater was the dungeons that they added. Now this update added a bunch of new dungeons and it was pretty cool being able to go into the water and explore a little bit. Combat was a little bit iffy, like most survival games, there really isn't a lot to do underneath the water sections, but they can add a little bit. So imagine a whole world, maybe even see a Thieves style themed, maybe a little bit like Atlas, but actually good. And it could be a bit of a winner, attacking players on their ships, on their bases. That could definitely be something good and fresh for Conan Exiles as we kind of all got used to living just in the sands. Obviously it says the Shattered Shore as well, so there is going to be some land. It's not going to be just an archipelago with small islands. It does look like there will be some sort of big landmass as well. But it does say to me, we're going for a pirate themed DLC map. It's going to be really interesting to see how they integrate it to the rest of the main game. Are we going to have character transfers enabled? Is it going to be bolted on to the current map, but you have to pay to actually access it? Some of this could be good, some of this could be bad. I'm going to be there every step of the way giving you the exclusive access you need to know about Conan Exiles Shattered Shore. I did cover this in a separate video yesterday, but I think it's still pretty hot right now. New World obviously has been delayed. It's not going to be coming out now until August. The beta has been pushed back until July. Originally meant to come out in April for the beta and then full release in May. It has been pushed back a number of months due to the COVID-19 virus. So obviously COVID-19 is affecting a lot of different aspects of life. Let's hope Rust and Conan Exiles don't fall to the same problems or issues. And we don't see their games being delayed or their DLC being delayed in the future. 
So Art Survival Evolved had its Easter event go live a couple of days ago and yes of course there were problems with that update. It's again made some creatures invisible on the lunar surface on console. So if you're playing on PlayStation 4 which looks like it's affecting that one the most, hopefully a fix will be coming very soon. On top of that, Dolly, the live ops manager, has said that they're looking at respawn rates for the event dinos. It's a big deal for people that play Ark Survival Evolved. They want their dinosaurs themed. They get them in different colors for these events. But it looks like they've not been spawning correctly. So there's only been one or two different colors happening. And on top of that, some long-term issues that arose with Genesis launching. Six weeks later, they still haven't fixed. Finally, might be actually being worked. One of the big ones is you're not able to use your admin commands properly because for some reason it marks out letter one or I as something bad. And so Xbox won't let you type it in. It does seem to only affect Xbox as far as I'm aware. So a quick way around that is not to use I or one, use different numbers if you're trying to spawn any items in or the amounts. On top of that also they have got fixes in the line for dedicated servers. A big criticism of mine and why I really am not a loving ARC at the moment is they broke their dedicated servers for Xbox and PlayStation users. You can use your second Xbox or PlayStation as a server but they failed to tell people that it wouldn't work once Genesis went live. And even if you didn't buy the DLC, your servers would no longer be able to be activated or used. So six weeks later, it still hasn't been implemented. And although it's a small minority that use these boxes, it's still quite a lot of people, as it used to be the only way you could host your own server before we got rentable ones. And lastly, on top of that as well, there's going to be some stuff with Windows 10. A lot of people complaining about aim butters, and it looks like they are taking some steps to reduce that as well. All in all, once more, Arc has great ideas, but they just don't actually test their products enough, and they keep breaking stuff with even just the simplest of updates that are meant to be a nice little gift for the players. It ends up making most people worried that the next update is going to break their game more. I'm kind of done with Arc for the next few weeks. I'll carry on doing the news, but I'm going to take a little break while I play Last Oasis, and I'll be back and see if the game is in a more stable condition in a few weeks. Last Oasis continues to recover from its rocky launch. Now it's been actually going for a good few days now. It's pretty stable. The servers have been great, and they've just added hard servers, which open up the game a lot more. It is a PvP-focused game, and without the hard servers, a lot of players were getting shanked and ganked by big clans because they had nothing else to do. But now the hard servers are opened up, it gives the larger clans the chance to aim for sort of endgame content where they can take over the maps themselves and tax players. It's it's all a little bit complicated. I have got some guides and tutorials explaining it in a bit more detail. I am really loving Last Oasis so much so I'm going to be doing a lot more content on it in the next few weeks. So you can expect it to be almost daily with guides, live streams particularly, and I'm just really enjoying it. It's a bit of a grind. It's a bit different for me. I've never really played too much PvP other than Atlas, but I'm really looking forward to getting more Last Oasis content out. So go and check it out if you haven't. Vigor went live with their season 3 update yesterday, adding a bunch of new weapons including silenced pistols and AKs and a hell of a lot more. They've also added a brand new game mode which is pretty much team deathmatch with a little bit of a twist. It's live right now, go and check it out. Green Hell launched its co-op gameplay update that went live on the 7th of April on Steam. You can now play with your friends up to four players in this Amazon jungle survival game. No news yet on when it's come to console, but this is one of the final stages before they start porting it properly or before we may even see it just pop up on Xbox and PlayStation in the near future. No Man's Sky dropped another update that adds significant options for you to play the game, including the brand new exosuit. They also added, maybe more importantly, the ability to hide your electrical wires. Ever since the power update, a lot of players have been unhappy that wires pretty much sharpen your bases and there's no way to really adequately hide them unless you can do absolute wonders by hiding it behind the walls, etc. Just like you probably would in real life. But now there is an actual device you can buy from the Anonymly that actually hides all of your wires i mean that might be the most exciting thing for a lot but i really like the look at this exo suit as well it's meant to help you gather resources quicker and better and gives you another option while you're exploring the planet's no man's sky they've added also other stuff like solar panels and which kind of makes sense in the futuristic setting that you would have solar panels generating power rather than a typical furnace so all good stuff yet again more great content absolutely free for no man's sky fans 
The update dropped on Xbox, PlayStation and PC. I expect a small hotfix to come as well, just to mop up any other lingering issues. So go and try it out if you haven't seen it already. And returning back to Conan Exiles, Xbox people, you got a update about 22 hours ago that adds a fix for Hanuman's Grotto, a few exploits being fixed, and some dashboarding issues. But the biggest, most exciting thing is that hopefully their voice chat will now actually be something that works. They've introduced a new system called Vivox. So I'm really glad to see they've added this as a fix. I didn't even know this was something they was working on. So I don't know if it's already on PlayStation 4, but that's the one that I've experienced the most problems. Hopefully this means they're going to be producing it for the PlayStation as well. It does look like they've fixed some mesh spots that allow people to build in spots they shouldn't. So hopefully that's fixed now. And as you can see, it's just really a small fix, but it was an update that went live yesterday. Population Zero is another game I've been keeping tabs on, a survival game with a unique difference of seven day only servers that wipe and give you lots of different game modes when it does come back online. They're showcasing their battle system in their latest devlog video, highlighting what you can do with a weapon or without and the different animations and attacks that you can do. So go and check it out. I'll leave the link for it in the description box if you want to see more of the battle system. Population Zero is scheduled for a release in May and I do believe it's going to be early access though so expect lots of content coming up in and around that time now that new world has been delayed i'll have a bit more time to focus on some other stuff too it is only pc unfortunately no xbox or playstation release just yet but it's pretty interesting i'm going to take a look at this once more Deadside dropped their official trailer this week. It's coming out on the 12th of April, so only a few days to go, for this open world survival PvP game, much in the same vein as Daisy and Scum. Hopefully it's got enough differences to make it a little bit more interesting, or at least add something brand new to it. I'll be trying this out, it is a PC game only, and I will be giving you my thoughts and opinions. I have got early access to it now, and I am allowed to tell you what I think about it the day before, so expect that video hopefully soon. This week was meant to see the release of the Fallout 76, big huge update that adds NPCs, followers and a lot more story based content in its Waylanders update. However though, it was delayed once more, it's coming out next week now on the 14th. Hopefully though this launch trailer too will get you in the mood and maybe entice you back into it. I'm not going to lie, it's, it's about only 25% that I'm going to give this a try next week. But I am intrigued to see what it would be like. I had never really minded not having NPCs or followers. I thought there was a lot of mobs, there was a lot to explore in Fallout, and it was meant to be that interaction with other players that made this game interesting. But I do appreciate a lot of you guys really just want Fallout with your friends, so hopefully this satisfies that, that gives you them companions and NPCs and makes the world a little bit more interesting. So yeah, there's going to be lots of stuff, lots of landmarks revamped, lots of factions added to it. It will be interesting to take a look and see what Bethesda have done. Have they managed to turn Fallout Center? six around. Man Eater the Survival Shark game is coming on May the 22nd and have just announced that pre-rolls are now live on the Xbox One. The game is going to be $39.99 and is an RPG style survival game where you play as a killer shark taking on other sea creatures as well as munching on the humans that litter the world. It is going to have a pre-download as well so I'm looking forward to giving this one a try it's interesting for sure. And finishing off the show with Grounded, I gave you guys a little brief trailer look at this, the single player trailer, but there was a bunch of gameplay done as well. They live streamed about 25 minutes, I do believe, of gameplay and just showing some really cool stuff. This is getting more exciting by the day. It is literally ARK, but maybe for a bit of a younger generation or certainly for people that don't want to see lots of blood and gore everywhere. Taking on these insects, taking on lots of boss style creatures, it looks like it's a lot more going for it than I first thought. It is a co-op survival game and it is going to be Xbox and Steam exclusive for a little while. In fact, I don't think it is ever going to come out on the PlayStation as it is an Xbox Studios game. But they have said it's coming to Steam at the same time. And of course, the trailer didn't announce just a single player. The trailer did confirm that the game is going to be coming out on July the 28th. I am going to be all over this. So it looks like it's going to be a great summer. We've got some good games coming out in May. In fact, we've got some good games stuff coming out next week. Hopefully Stranded Deep is going to be appearing, but I need to get more confirmation of that. If the Rust beta does drop and I get access, it is going to be crazy the next few weeks. 2020, Summer of Survival is here. For the best in survival game news, guides and tutorials about the newest survival games coming out and my honest opinion on whether or not you should buy them. Make sure you've got notifications on and go and follow me on my social media if you want to keep up to date even more.
Have a great Easter if that's your thing and don't get too sick eating all that chocolate. I'll see you rat bags later. I'm going to take a few days off.